God's grace and mercy and peace to you from our Father, through that precious gift of His Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We've heard our sermon text recorded for us in Genesis chapter 32. Let's ask for God's blessings. Let's pray. O Lord, sanctify us by the truth. Your word is truth. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I just asked you to pray, and uh, what did you do with your hands? Did you fold them like this? Yes. Maybe, maybe some of you folded them like this. Sometimes that works, too. Did you take a look at the front cover of the bulletin yet? Remember what that was on the front cover? Hands of prayer like this. Maybe you've seen somebody actually pray like this, with their hands up. Have you seen that? Sometimes I've done that too, yes. Have you seen somebody pray like this, with their hands up like this? You've seen that too, right? Now, you have all, and not, maybe not quite all of you quite, some of you are still young and getting instructed in things, but I'll tell you now so that when catechism comes, you're ready. Uh, when we learn about prayer, the Lord's Prayer particularly, you're taught that it doesn't matter how you hold your hands, whatever position they're in, it doesn't matter. What matters is the heart, that as we come to our God at His invitation with all of our needs and all of our requests, He hears us. He has promised to hear us as we come to Him with that faithful heart. Not only has He promised to hear us, He promises to answer us and to give us exactly what we need, probably even better than what we could have asked for. Such is our gracious and loving God who treats us better than we deserve. In our text, we see Jacob in prayer and probably praying in a way that you have never prayed. I don't think I've ever prayed like that. No, I haven't. He's wrestling, literally wrestling. He is in physical contact, gripping onto and holding one person against another. And who is it that he is wrestling with in our text? Who is that? It is none other than God himself. As he would say later, I have seen God face to face and my life has been spared. Wrestling with God in prayer. Why is he in this moment of struggle? Why is he fighting so hard in prayer with his God. Looking at it from Jacob's side of things, I gave a brief introduction before I read the lesson over at the lectern. I think we can understand why he is in such a place that he feels like he needs to wrestle. He has a struggle that he is fighting with, and it is inside of himself. You may remember the whole story of Jacob, right? Of how he was born a twin brother, and how it was prophesied and then from God that he would be the one that would hold the birthright, he would be the one who would be blessed, but actually his brother was the older brother and came out first. Of course, this difference between the two of them, and they were quite different in other ways too, look and personality-wise, it became quite a conflict between the two of them. And then, in a moment of, shall we say, selfish self-advancement, Jacob works out a plan to steal the birthright that his father wanted to give to his brother. He steals it. And then, of course, this leads to more conflict between the two, and Jacob runs away. He flees off to his relatives. And there, he starts his family. He acquires great wealth. He acquires his 11 sons. You know those sons who would become the fathers of the 12 tribes of Israel, right? There, the Lord comes to him and says, Time to return to the promised land. 
time to go back home. And you could well imagine how his heart must have felt inside of him. I have to go back to where Esau is, and I have to face him. He was afraid. If you look back in the section, uh, Genesis chapter 32, you'll see some of the prayers and words that he says as he cries out to God that God would protect him and bless him, keep him and his family safe. He is wrestling, wrestling in his own heart and wrestling with God, that the God of his fathers, the God of Abraham and Isaac, would keep the promises now given to him that he would go to that promised land and there his descendants would become as numerous as the stars in the sky and from them would come the Savior of the world. Lord, keep your promises to me. Brothers and sisters in Christ, have you wrestled with God in prayer? Now, maybe it's not family strife that is causing you to become worried and afraid. Maybe you're not afraid to go home and face what's waiting for you. I hope that never happens. But I think there are times when we are afraid of what is coming. What lies just around the corner? What is on the other side of the stream like it was for Jacob? What kind of terrible thing is going to happen? And as we think about that approaching doom or pain or suffering, we pray. And as we pray, it is a struggle in our hearts of trusting God or not trusting God. Do we try to find our own way to a solution? Or do we just simply take all that it is, all that's on our heart, all the things that we are dreading, and we lay them at God's feet and we say, Lord, keep your promises to me. You have promised to be with me wherever I may go. You have promised that you will work out everything for my good. And even in this life, if there is suffering, pain, and yes, even death, you have promised that when the moment is right, you will rescue me from this place of death and bring me safely home to heaven. Lord, Fulfill your promises. Keep your promises to me. As much as those burdens may hang on our hearts and move us to wrestle with God in prayer, perhaps the one where we most fervently fight with God to hold on to His promises, that He would keep them in every way, is when we are feeling the guilt of our sin. When we know how we have failed. When we have said and done the very thing that we know we shouldn't have. For those times when we have failed to trust in God. Failed to pray to Him when we should when we feel like we are completely unworthy of any of the blessings of God, then let us call on our God and say, Lord, fulfill your promises to me once again. Forgive my sins. Remember your son hanging on the cross. Remember his words that he cried out, Father, forgive them. Remember how he cried out, it is finished. Remember all of these things, and for his sake, forgive me all my sins. Jacob knew that he was unworthy of any of the kindness that God had showed him. He knew what kind of person he had been, this Jacob kind of person, and I say that hoping that you remember exactly how those stories went long ago of how he tried his own way and how it kept getting him into trouble. Here, as he wrestles with God in prayer, God asks him, what is your name? 
Jacob, he said. Your name will no longer be Jacob, this heel grabber, this striver, this I'm going to make my own way. I'm going to be this trickster kind of person. I'm going to achieve and succeed by my own wits and abilities. You are no longer going to be Jacob. Your name will be Israel because you have fought with God and with men and have won. Israel, one who wrestles with God, one who strives with God, not against God, but struggles in prayer, in faith, in trust. Even when everything around you or in front of you, behind you says, there is no hope, you wrestle with God and say, keep your promises to me, and you win. Dear Christian, we are children of that Israel of long ago by faith, and that's God, our Savior, who keeps His promises. That means that as we come to God with our prayers and with our troubles, our difficulties, our pains, yes, even our death or a death of a loved one, it is with confidence that this God of love who is more than ready, more than eager, overflowing with love and grace to answer our prayers. He is more than ready to come to be with us, struggle with us, so that we might learn all the more to hold on to Him. When it came time for the struggle to end and Jacob's journey Israel's journey to continue, God said to him, let me go, it's daybreak. Jacob said, I will not let you go until you bless me. God touched his hip right at the joint, and as he touched it, he dislocated that hip. From that moment on, As Jacob got up from his wrestling match with God and walked down to the river to cross the Jabbok and join his family, every step he took, he limped. For every moment of his life then, as he traveled on to meet his brother, to go and live in the promised land, and eventually to go down to the land of Egypt with his family to live safely there under his son Joseph, Every step he took was with a limp. It hurt. It was suffering. But every step he reminded, he was reminded that every step he took as one who has wrestled with God and won. Brothers and sisters in Christ, it doesn't take many years of this life for us too to have aches and pains, to have those things that remind us of our own wrestling with God. As we walk step by step closer to home, the promised land that God has given to us, may each step every day remind us that we too have wrestled with God in prayer the God of love and faithfulness who keeps His promises. What a wonderful God we have who makes promises that He will never break, who invites us to come to Him in prayer time and again, to trust in Him, knowing that whatever it may be, However dark our mood or however dark our life, yet by faith we can know that God will bless us. Today as we pray, and every day as we pray, may we receive what God has promised, forgiveness of our sins, faith to trust in Him, and the strength to live each day as ones who wrestle with God in prayer. Amen. Please stand. May the peace of God which surpasses our understanding guard and keep our hearts and our minds through faith in Christ Jesus.